My name is Daniel Ennett. I lost my arms and legs to meningitis before I could even read. I'm a university student. I like to play video games and party with my friends. I've adapted to life with my disability, and I'm very curious as to how other people have adapted to theirs. So my mom has challenged me to go find a cultural outlet. So me and my assistant, Jerry, are gonna go visit with a clown who works in hospitals and nursing homes. I have MS, and if I concentrated on what I can't do rather than what I can do, I would never get out of bed. My name is Tracy Mary Thompson. I was a business woman, modeled, and now I'm a clown. I became a caring clown because I was in the hospital for years because my son has a rare autoimmune disease and had a double lung transplant. I would have given anything to have just a moment a little reprieve to see some normal life, to catch my breath. I became a caring clown so I can help others have a moment of reprieve just to catch their breath. A caring clown goes into hospitals and care centers and is more like a therapeutic clown where we try and give a smile, a song, something to make their day better and to inspire them to fight a little harder. Happy is a magical being, and they believe in that magical being. The best part of being a caring clown is just holding their hand and being there for them. I'm very excited to meet Daniel. Um, I've heard a lot about him. Hello, hello, you must be happy. Oh, you must be Daniel, nice to meet you. With Daniel, I connected immediately. I don't mind clowns at all, actually. I think if someone can just be shamelessly happy all the time and just, you know, bring that into someone's life, then that's fairly important. I'm not that person, but uh, <laughs> I commend those who can do that. One thing I believe in is that if I try to do things by myself, I, I, it's very problematic. But when I do something with another person, we can accomplish anything. Uh, yeah, MS is one hell of a disease that, uh, you know, you, your nerves start deteriorating. She says she's in a constant state of pain and to be able to switch that off for 20 minutes and be able to interact with people just to try and brighten their day, that's, that's, uh, that's amazing. You see how she interacts with older people and you know, you see the uh, very personal interaction, you know, looking, looking deep into their eyes and interacting with them. Uh, at the start, I was very cynical. So Daniel, do I get a big thumbs up on that one? I think so. But, you know, five minutes in the lobby and a one interaction, very personal interaction later, uh, you know, I was completely convinced that what she was doing had a lot of meaning and a lot of purpose in these people's lives. You wanted to, to talk, <laughs> to get together. I understand. I wanted to see you today, too. I loved meeting Daniel, and we actually really connected. Daniel's not letting this kick him down. Daniel's getting up and fighting. He has found his normal. When I meet somebody who, who fights and believes in what I do, you can't get a stronger connection. And that's why I love him. So I was skeptical at first, but when I saw Happy the Clown one-on-one -on -one with people, it was beautiful. My mom also arranged for me to have a one-on-one -on -one dance class with a theater artist. My name's Christy Hansen. I am a classically trained actress. I work as a dancer and a singer.
Equity is my one-woman show uh, based on my life, juxtaposed with that of um, people who have lost limbs uh, to landmine accidents throughout history and um, in different areas of the world. And the thesis of that show is that I am, in the grand scheme of things, uh, one of the lucky ones. Hello, hello. Hello. I am Daniel. Hi, Daniel. I'm, I'm Christy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. This is Jeremiah. Hi, Jeremiah. Yeah, speaking. nice to meet you guys. So, what are we going to get up to today? Well, I thought we would chat a little bit um, about uh, uh, dance and, uh, you know, using what you got and weight transfer and how that uh, affects, um, you know, having different bodies and what we can do that's physically interesting and beautiful that expresses um, what, uh, you know, what our personal experience is. Prosthetics for me are a mixed bag, you know, I, yeah. I don't really like them. So, mm -hmm. well, what's your take on uh, using a prosthetic? Well, for me, I mean, I was, I'm congenital, so I was born uh, missing my fibula and um, I have a short, um, short femur as well too. So basically I was born with a short leg. Um, so I sort of got into a prosthetic when I was nine months old. And so I've been in it forever. Um, so for me, that's always just sort of been my reality. For, for me, for, for dance specifically, like without the prosthetic, it has opened a whole, whole new world for me. And I, I used to, you know, people would have the dreams where they're, they're naked at school, and my my bad dream would always be that I can't find my prosthetic, and I'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> trying to find it somewhere too. So it was like being naked for me, more naked than naked. But now it's been it's been a really cool um, journey for me of you know what's what's my world like with the prosthetic off. So for me, I think what's most interesting in my work is always just seeing how a specific body moves and what they have to do. Um, so for me, I always think it's really uh, it's really interesting for me to see what, you know, how I weight bear and um, what, I can, what I can do. Because I still have a heel pad too, so I can take quite a lot of, I can take pretty much all my weight on it too. People are always like, oh, doesn't that hurt your stump? And it doesn't because I'm lucky enough to have the heel pad. So I guess if we could start it, like we can both be sitting here on our chairs. That's how we'll start. And, um, I guess I'll start by rolling both my shoulders and then you can respond to that and do it how you would. It's really interesting. It's like it's offer and, and receiving something. So I make a physical offer and he returns it. He returns it though how his body sees it. And I think that's the most interesting thing in that exercise is seeing that. So getting the chance to work with Daniel was really cool for me today because uh, we started off stationary and I thought okay so this is what's going to happen it's going to be the chair in one's place and I'll use his body weight and the chair's weight and we'll go ahead but then he was able to put off that offer that yeah the chair moves and there's a whole other possibility um, in the realm of movement that we can use and then the work just took off to a whole other level. It's just, I think that was a really cool exercise, especially to be doing with people with such different body types. <laughs> so I think that was really fun. And, and again, just, it's, it's really making my mind spin about what's possible and beautiful within dance and physical theater. Well, that was uh, definitely a new experience. Never really done anything like that before. Uh, you know, it was, it's nice to work with someone who was so dynamic and not really shy, so we could definitely pull off a bunch of different uh, bizarre moves. <laughs> For me, what I sort of learned today and what has been reiterated in my thesis and my philosophy is that everybody is different. Everybody has a realm of possibility and it's absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. And the more authentic it is, that it comes from the person, the more universal it becomes for all of us in our search for humanity, which I believe is the purpose of art. The dance was awesome, but the one form of art I truly enjoy is painting. Mm. 
Making art is important because it helps people learn who you are. Okay, I'm Paul Freeman. I'm the artistic director at the Nina Hegarty Center for the Arts, and we're an art center that supports 170 artists with developmental disabilities and becoming artists. 11 years ago, we started with myself and one young woman with uh, Down syndrome who wanted to be an artist. 11 years later, we're supporting 170 people in art making. They're having solo exhibitions, starting to be accepted as artists in their own right. Literally on the street, I get people staring at me and stuff, and I don't like that. But at least here, it's different. They treat me like I'm normal, like I'm everybody else. So that's nice. Making something good and having others have a smile on their face because of it. Definitely, it's pretty much the highlight of coming here. One of the advantages that the artists we're working with have is an ability to dive in deep right away. So I would expect one of the challenges for Dan will be cameras are here. He's surrounded by all kinds of new people who are going to be interested in him. He's going to have people here asking him questions. Hello. Hi, Daniel. Nice to, Good meet, to meet you. Good to meet you. I'm Paul. I'm Daniel. Welcome to the Nina Haggerty Center. Uh, Beautiful. Let me show you around. If you go down and look at the ceramic work across the walls, it's like they're seeing a, something entirely different, like we're missing a dimension or something. There's some very compelling work. So there's a lot of really compelling art here. I'm kind of intimidated, but I can't wait to see what I managed to pull off with a piece of canvas and a little bit of acrylics. See if I can uh, compare here. <laughs> I've seen Danny paint uh, different models in his spare time, so I know he's very well practiced with paints. Uh, Warhammer 40K Universe miniatures, and they're uh, just, just an artistic outlet. Uh, it has a game associated with it, but I uh, ended up picking it up purely for the painting aspect. I found the accuracy required to be uh, something that was very attractive to me because they're so small. You don't know true frustration until you can't hold something down and it just keeps doing this. Require a lot of work and time, so it's a nice thing to be able to sit down and do. So I'm really interested to see what he can do at the Nina Center. So right now I'm painting the, the camera of the cameraman who's filming this show. Often a person with a developmental disability is not trusted to be able to do a good job on their own. The first thing we give an artist who joins us at the Nina Haggerty Center is a feeling that you are gonna do this yourself your way. I am not an ancient Chinese calligrapher. Okay, so you're all finished. Yeah. Looks great. Do you wanna find a place to hang it up in the kitchen? You know what, that'd be awesome. Add it to uh, a bunch of pieces that are gonna put me to shame. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sounds good. You guys, a lot of you met Daniel today, hey? Uh, He's finished his first painting in what, probably 15 years? Yeah. <laughs> and we'll find a place for him to put it on the wall. Are you right here? Oh. Nina Haggerty Center exists to bring people with developmental disabilities together to learn about and explore what it means to be an artist. But most importantly, it's an opportunity for the rest of the world to come in and see what's happening. Oh, Daniel, you're home. How was your day? I had a great day today. I actually met with a clown. I did some dancing, and I did painting, actually. Oh, can I see your work? Actually, it's ha hanging up the Nina Haggerty right now, so if you want to make the trip, yeah, sure. That's my boy, hanging in a gallery.